hey, you know about the Arduino? Hey, you know about the Arduino? Hey, you know about the Arduino? And yes, we know about the Arduino. It's everywhere. So the Arduino is this little piece of hardware. It's a little microcontroller on a little convenient uh, development board. Hey, you know about the Arduino? And uh, it's almost real size is the screen if I just hold it out there. I think it is. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it's $30. Um, it's got analog I.O., digital I.O., powered by the USB, connect to the computer to program it and to interact with it. Um, and so basically, for $30, students or hobbyists can get this little cheap piece of hardware that they can interact with the real world with, and it's really exciting. So we wanted to give it an opportunity to uh, do this with LabVIEW instead of the C programming environment that it comes with. Hey, you know about the Arduino? So we're thinking, uh, perhaps we come up with some sweet VIs like DACMX, where you just open, modify, read, write, and stuff, close, maybe a configure in there if you need to, and, uh, and make this, this interfacing as super simple as possible so students can get in there, come up with an idea, implement it graphically, and bada boom, there you go. Yes, we know about the Arduino, it's everywhere. Um, I started in AE in 2007, and I was on Recon. Uh, and then just go, mm -hmm. and then I transi transitioned into academic marketing about a year ago, and I've been focusing on uh, robotics and controls cool. uh, in the teaching space. Cool. And you are the project mentor for these two knuckleheads over here? Yes. Cool. <laughs> cool. So, uh, we got a few uh, demos here. So the Arduino, like Ben said, has uh, analog input pins, uh, digital I.O., and PWM pins. So we're just going to show off some of the things you can do with that and how easy LabVIEW will make that. So. Um, first, we just have a little potentiometer there, and uh, we're just going to see if we can read the value from that in lab view. So we'll go ahead and run this. So are you guys running right now, and if I turn the knob on the pot here, you can see we just read 0 to 5 volts. Updates nice and smooth, pretty stable. Um, I can stop it here, and we can see this just measures the sample rate, so we're getting about 200 hertz. So nothing too fancy, but uh, pretty decent for a $30 piece of hardware. Can you show us what the code looks like? Yes, yeah, so we'll open up. This is the exciting part. Block diagram here, and everything on the bottom half here is just used to calculate the update rate. So the end user, all they need to do is drop three VIs. We have an initialized VI that just uh, connects to the Arduino. Uh, this is our analog read pin, um, and you can see on the front panel, they just get a choice of the six different analog input pins they can read from, sure. and then uh, our output voltage in both numeric and uh, nice little... So imagine those nice uh, blue and white VIs though, that basically look, as I mentioned, exactly like a driver. Those probably didn't exist before you and Ben got involved. Right, so these are the VIs that we made, and like Ben said, you kind of have the initialize, read and write inside a while loop, and then a close at the end. Well, I think the one of the biggest reasons that they've been so successful with this project so far is they found something that they were truly interested in. What I really like about it is that we've, we've kind of done all the grunt work of making this cool platform, but at this point it's really delivering it, making it um, tutorials and easy for students to understand, but then also like awesome demos. You know, like, yeah, there's a wire connected to another block of stuff that goes to your computer, like whoop de doo but if you see a robot moving or you see some lights flashing to music, for instance, uh, then things get pretty exciting pretty quickly. Um, as you can see, I mean, from day one, we could tell they're super passionate about just Arduino and these hobbyist projects like robotics that students will be working on. Um, and I think that's really helped drive them throughout the project. Uh, it's important to kind of know what you're getting into and make sure you have the, the time and uh, kind of abilities that you're, you're going to need for the project. Um, but that being said, if you if a project comes up that is something you think you'd be interested in, like definitely find out more about it. Sure. Um, you know, there's not necessarily a commitment right up front, but you know, take some time and, and see if it's something you want to do. Cool. So when I first went down to AE to find someone to work on this project, I was you know envisioning maybe just one AE, um, and I talked to Ben about it, and he was interested. But from the start, you know, he mentioned that it might be a lot of work for him to take on by himself, and then he recruited. Sam, who turned out to be a, a perfect fit for the project, and I've worked with AEs before where, you know, they take on too much and they can't complete it or they don't do a good job, um, and so it's really great to see Ben take that initiative that he realizes up front he's not going to be able to do all of this, and he's going to bring someone on to help. So I actually heard about the project kind of randomly um, in a one-on-one -on -one with my team lead. Uh, he just mentioned someone came down and was talking about Arduinos to somebody, and as soon as I heard that, I was like, I gotta find out more. So uh, he, he told me who he heard it from, 
and I went and uh, talked to Ben because I guess some people came and talked to him about it. And then uh, we kind of set up a meeting with Megan and uh, just went from there. Cool. Uh, Sam, for example, when we started this project, we didn't really have any deadlines or commitments. Um, and Sam said, well, why don't I go ahead and create this API to Arduino and we will meet before the holidays and I will present to you what I have. Um, and so I said, great. And that was really cool because, I mean, he set his own timelines and deadlines for this project that he thought were reasonable. Um, also, in the last couple of meetings, we've been presenting this to some key stakeholders like uh, Ray Omgren, uh, Dave Wilson, and Ben pointed out that, you know, we're giving these presentations, but we didn't have any slides to share. And so he took on the initiative to not only identify that we needed slides, but he actually created a slide deck for us to use. Um, on top of that, I was impressed that he came up to my desk the other day and uh, wanted to run through it several times before going into a meeting. Um, and so that just shows that he realized how important this was and he wanted to do a really good job. In this case, is like you have to be really aggressive also about getting that feedback. So we never asked for feedback and it was kind of just given, which was really awesome. But uh, I've heard a lot of times AEs really need to chase that feedback. What do I need to get better at? What did I do that was really awesome? When you are an AE, if you're a marketing major, it's really easy to take on a project like writing a paper or creating a VI. Um, but if you take a step back and talk to the PME or PMM who's mentoring you, you know, what is the strategy of this paper? Why are we creating it? Um, and try to get the bigger picture. They will really respect that and then they'll probably involve you more in this. And I think maybe the best thing for me out of this is getting to see how other departments work and how they interact with one another. Sure. Um, it's not, you know, just because it's a project for marketing doesn't mean that's all you're going to see. Um, so it's pretty interesting to see how NI works kind of under the hood. Cool. Well, Megan, Sam, Ben, definitely appreciate you guys taking the time. Ben, I got to get a shot of your boots before we oh, part ways. Let me tell you about these boots. They're 25 years old. Yeah, you wouldn't expect it because I'm not even 25 years old. But the boots I'm rocking, lizard skin, vintage. Wow. All right, we, got, we got one more demo for the way we out. We need to show you. Uh, you uh, let's see. Yep. Yeah. So this is an excellent demo of offloading the processing to the computer and lab view to handle, and then outputting the, the, the I.O. to the Arduino. Hey, you know about the Arduino? And yes, we know about the Arduino. It's everywhere. 